Nathaniel here, and welcome back to another episode of a little bit of deep learning in Keras, where we learn just a little bit of deep learning and a whole lot of Keras. And today we're talking about pre-processing. So this is when you're working with data, when you want to do some transformations to data beforehand, and when you take that data and then use it to do machine learning. Uh, so this is the type of pre-processing we're going over. We're going over lots of stuff, natural language processing, image, basic pre-processing. So stick with me. Um, let's get in. So simple pre-processing, you know, the first thing that we'll want to do is make some data, some random data. Um, some simple pre-processing thing that we can do is we can take uh, an array of categories and make it categorical. So in this case, make it into a one-hot vector. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So if we have four classes, uh, we'll represent each of these four classes either as a zero or a one in a one-hot vector that's of dimension four. Um, the next sort of super basic pre-processing is to normalize your data. Um, and you always want to do this if you can. Uh, and generally speaking, you want to learn the normalization. So you want to learn what the uh, normalization constants are. Um, okay, so we normalize our data, that's another thing. The uh, next stuff I'm gonna be going over is a little bit more advanced. We're moving into sequence pre-processing. So let's say you have a sequence of actions uh, and you can go ahead and you can pre-process these in multiple ways. One of the ways, so this is a sequence of actions. I've got one, two, four, four, and that leads to the end of, you know, a game, perhaps. Three is the end of a game. So a sequence of actions. I can go ahead and pad uh, my sequence of actions. And so what does this mean? This is going to mean I'm going to take uh, any sequence that is less than the max length, okay, and I'm going to uh, place before this sequence, so pre, uh, the value of zero, that's in uh, d type int32. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to place zeros before the sequences that are that are less than max length, and I'm going to truncate afterwards. So I'm going to take all the things. So if it's too long, I'm going to I'm going to cut from the end. Um, so that's what padding does. Um, I can show you how this would work on our sequences here. Pretty simple. Notice for our teeny little sequence of three. We go ahead and we put a lot of zeros in front. And for our longest sequence, uh, we don't have anything in front. So next kind of cool tool that you can use. Um, excuse me. That's, that's uncouth. The next kind of cool tool that you can use <clears throat> is skipgrams. And this is incredibly useful if you're going to be doing any of the word to that type stuff. So let's say you have this sort of sequence of actions. And you want to learn which actions are related to each other. Uh, you know, one way you could do this is see which actions co-occur frequently. And so skipgrams are how you do it. So this one acts on a single sequence, so a single padded sequence. Uh, we have to specify the vocabulary size beforehand. Um, you specify the window size. This is how far forward and back we can look. You specify the ratio of negative samples. You specify the shuffle, always shuffle. It's always a good thing. And then categorical, this will... Uh, this so it spits out some labels as well, and this will show whether the labels are um, zeros or ones, or they uh, one hot vectors. So what does this look like? And we can explain this a little bit more. Okay, so down here we have a, uh, a sort of this stream of ones and zeros. So the ones means these actually occur, and the zeros means these don't occur. So four four. So you'll notice in our actual original sequence, four and four occur back to back. So they are in the window size of one of each other. So ta da, that looks good. Um, one six does not occur. Uh, four six does not occur. Four four it occurs. Uh, so it's pretty simple. Uh, two one for example does this, it does occur. Um, this is this is a good way to do some unsupervised learning. Okay, so the most the the, the sequence that most people work with generally speaking is actually going to be natural language text. So like English or German or something like that. Uh, so generally you'll need to do some text preprocessing. So for example, uh, my text is, my name is Nathaniel, I like data science, let's do deep learning and Keras, comma, my fave lib. So that's, that's the text we're going to be pre-processing. Um, machines don't understand text whatsoever, so we need to convert this text into numbers, generally speaking. Um, but the first step to convert it into numbers is you need to split it, you need to break it apart. Um, so text to word sequence, we'll go ahead and we'll split it for you. It will take all of your words, it will put, uh, put them into lowercase, and it will split them based on whatever splitter you uh, provide. Um, you can also add some filters in here. 
And so, for example, this did this, this did some good filtering. It actually filtered out the comma. There's no comma in here. Um, it filtered out the periods as well. You can specify your own filters by specifying this filter object here. And let's say we just want to filter out this sort of apostrophe. Um, in this case, we, we get the new lines, we get the uh, you know, period new line here, we get a comma, there's, there's a lot of stuff that we get. Um, so you can always specify your own sort of filters in, or, in order to break up these things. Um, but people can go even further. So for example, we can go ahead and make this uh, text into a, a one-hot representation. And again, this should look, these tokenizers should look very similar to our um, natural language processing stuff that we did with scikit-learn, which should be somewhere um, soon. Okay, so one hot. So this will go ahead and it will take our little text vector and it will spit it into a little one hot machine. So we'll, every word in our vocabulary, it will, it will count uh, how many words are there and put it in this. It's, it's kind of like a bag of words. Um, okay, in addition, you also have the classic tokenizer. And this, this, is, this is the one that most people use. Um, and again, it's incredibly similar to the scikit-learn one. So in our tokenizer, we need to specify a couple of things, number of words, lower, and split. Okay, so, ta -da. so number of words is none, so we'll keep learning the words. Then we get some text to fit on. So this is very similar, it's like scikit-learn all over again. And then we can go ahead and take that text and turn it into a sequence. So, ta-da. So in this case, each of these things is a single, so this one represents um, a word, and this 15 represents a word, so it just tokenizes it for us there. Um, in addition, we can we can make this into a little matrix as well. Um, this will count the number of words, um, so kind of like bag of words it for us. Um, okay. Uh, let's see what else. So in addition, we can, and, and notice, it's, you're like, why do we have a zero here? This, this is kind of weird. Um, so, so the zero here represents uh, the unknown character. And because we trained on this text, so we fit on this text, there's no characters that are unknown for us. Um, so, and so no, notice that this sequence looks a little bit different from this sequence. And this is because we only allowed uh, the number of words to be eight. Um, if we allowed the number of words to be, I guess, you know, 20, you know, this sequence would look, you know, near, nearly the same, nearly the same. Um, okay, so. Uh, the final thing I'll show you is I can, you can go ahead and do this on, on some sequences that you've never seen before and make a new bag of words representation and, you know, you'll, you'll get lots more zeros. Um, so data science is fun. Um, it's kind of surprising how many. So, okay. That, that, that's sort of all of the, the text preprocessing I was going to show you. Um, my, my advice here is the text preprocessing here is somewhat, Somewhat anemic. Um, actually, I like Scikit-Learn's text processing, pre-processing a little bit better, um, especially the tokenizers the, and the count vectorizers and stuff like that. Um, that being said, Skipgrams is super cool. Um, so the sequence pre-processing stuff is, is really interesting. Um, okay, so we, we've, we've gotten lots of different types of data. We've been able to pre-process them in various ways. Let's, let's go on to our favorite type of data. This is images. Um, so you guys should remember, this is all the way from Scikit-Learn's dataset stuff, so that should be over there in a little box if you guys want to check this out. Um, one of the cool datasets that we get is uh, this image dataset. There's two images. We've got, I think this is literally called China and this is called flower. So we've got some sort of pagoda in China and then some sort of flower. Who knows what this is. Um, so Keras allows you to do some really cool pre-processing with these images and generally speaking, uh, this would be uh, called um, uh, image augmentation, data augmentation as well. Um, so here's what we do. Uh, we, we make an image data generator. This is a Keras thing. This is actually probably the coolest part. Um, we specify some things. We can make feature-wise center. We can sample-wise center. We do normalization. and um, uh, So we can do uh, feature-wise normalization and, and sample-wise normalization. So. Again, you can look at the individual pixels, and you can normalize, or you can do sample-wise. There's a ton of stuff you can do. Um, so all of this up here, this, this is just basically pre-processing. And again, you need to fit on your training data in order to learn the parameters to do pre-processing later on, on your test data. Um, then we get some cool stuff here. And this is uh, sort of data augmentation. So we can take these images, and we can do some random shifts, some permutations to these images. So for example, we can rotate them 10 degrees. We can 
shift them 0% uh, in the width and 0% on the height. We can shear the images, you know, um, uh, you know, zero degrees or whatever this is measured in. Uh, we can zoom uh, in terms of percentages. Um, if we do these types of transformations, especially enlarging, um, we, we have a fill mode, which, which can be nearest. It can be a lot of things. This uses the basic psych, uh, SciPy uh, fill mode. Um, we can horizontal flip. So this kind of flips it. Uh, and we can also do vertical flip, and this flips it the other way. Um, we can do rescaling, and then we can do just a basic pre-processing function if that, if that isn't enough for you. Um, so a ton of cool stuff. And because I know that you guys want to, to sort of see this work in action, uh, we will definitely do that. Uh, the way that you do it is you, you say IDG, image data generator dot flow, you give it a data set, um, as well as some labels, um, as well as a batch size, and it will spit out uh, generated images. So IT is our iterator and let's let's just go through it. Um, so this is a flower. Is this upside down? It is. It's an upside down flower. Um, so it's kind of hard to... Ah, yeah, this one's this one's cool. I, this is... Uh, I'll stop on this one because I think this is pretty cool. So it's anyways, it's an upside down pagoda. And I think it's also... It's double flipped. Yeah, yeah. So it's flipped horizontally and vertically. So, man, what are the chances? And maybe... And you can also see, I think it's rotated a little bit. Yeah, wow. Oh, so <laughs> so just as some some deep learning intuition as to why you would do this, um, and I will go over this very deeply in the uh, in the sort of intro to data science that I'm going to be doing next. Um, but uh, the the idea here is that the the larger number of samples that you get, the more generalization performance that you will have. The better your machine learning will do uh, out of sample. Um, so the more samples you get, the better. And you can make kind of uh, different, uh, the same image sample, generally speaking, by doing a horizontal flip. It's, it's going to be the exact same thing, just sort of standing in the opposite rotation or orientation um, and small rotations as well. Okay. Um, as always, it's always a pleasure. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, this is probably going to be the last long video that we'll do. The rest is, uh, the rest is going to be cake. Um, so I hope to see you again. We're going to be doing applications. Uh, we're going to be learning about the scikit-learn API. We're going to be doing a lot more. Okay, thanks everybody. <laughs>